Hello everyone. Now today we are going to see inversion of double slender plank chain mechanism. So what is mechanism? Mechanism is nothing but it is the combination of links in which any one of the link is fixed and the other links will be having relative motion. And here fixed link is also called as frame. And in by fixing different links for the given mechanism, you will be getting different inversions. This different inversions means we are getting different mechanisms. Here we will be knowing what input we are giving and what output we are getting from that concern mechanism. So how this double slider branch chain mechanism consists of? It mainly consists of four links as you see here. So here particularly there will be two sliders and one binary link which will be connecting these two sliders and the next other link will be fixed. So here there will be two turning pair and two sliding pair. So two turning and two sliding pairs, they come under the category of lower pairs. So this is the basic configuration of the double slider crank chain mechanism. So what are the inversions of double slider crank chain mechanism? As I have previously told you in the previous slide that by fixing different links, you will be getting different mechanisms. And this phenomenon is nothing but what it is the inversions of that mechanism. So the first inversion of double slider crank chain mechanism is Scorchoke mechanism. Second is old lamps coupling and third is the electrical triangle. So what is Scorchoke mechanism? So this Scorchoke mechanism was developed by the scientist Scorch. So this mechanism was named after his near death. So it mainly consists of four links. One will be fixed link as a frame. Another link will be crank. Third will be slider which will be sliding in the slotted link 4. So here the rotary motion of the crank will be converted into sliding motion of the slider and relatively it will move due to this piston cylinder system. So here obviously there will be two turning pair and two sliding pair as this is the first inversion of the double slider crank chain mechanism. So now here we will see how this scorcher mechanism works. We have seen the basic double slider mechanism where four links were connected using two fully rotating pin joints or revolute pairs and two sliders. And we also saw its application called the elliptical triangle. Now we are going to look at its inversion. So instead of fixing this link number one, we will be fixing link number like this over here. Having fixed this link, on one side we will have a fully rotating pin, thereby creating a crank. And on the other side, we, because of this prismatic pair, we will have a slider. Interestingly, inside this slider, there is another sliding joint. So we are going to have another slider inside the first one. So we are going to have a slider inside a slider. Let us see how these links and pairs in our schematic diagram map into the physical mechanism. To start with, we have link number two, which is fixed. On it, we have a fully rotating pin B, which is here. This pin is holding the crank BC. So that's over here. So this is our crank. Attached to the crank is link number four. So that must be this green link. And link four is sliding within link one. So this blue link here, which is in the shape of a T, is link number one. And ultimately link one is sliding in a slot in the fixed link. That is this slot or guide. Let us see its motion. So if we drag on this crank, this is how it moves. Now, you might have noticed that point C is tracing a circle. And as it does so, the slot in which it is sliding is projecting its position and using it as the position of this T-shaped link. 
since we are taking a projection of a circular motion on one of its diameters, the motion of this link, this slider, is going to be a simple harmonic motion, provided, of course, our crank is rotating uniformly. This mechanism is called a scotch yoke mechanism. Okay, so this was where it about the scotch yoke mechanism. Now, the second inversion is the old amps coupling. So if you see in this old amps coupling, it is used to just connect the input shaft to the output shaft. But here, the, both the axis of the shaft, they are parallel, but they are not coax, means they are not in line. So here, this old amps coupling, it is used to connect the two shafts which are coaxial. So this is the input shaft. So to particular this flange, it is attached to the input shaft, is called as input flange. And here it is the output shaft. So the flange which is connected to the output shaft, it is the output flange. And this is the middle, uh, particularly this is the middle flange, which is also called as what? The intermediate piece or intermediate flange. So this is the stationary flange, while the other will be having rotary motion. And on this intermediate flange, there will be projections and there will be recess in this particular input and output flange. So that these two input and output flange will be having rotary motion and the intermediate flange will be having sliding motion with respect to input and output. So in this way, this old amps coupling, it is used to transmit the power from input shaft to output shaft with the help of this system. Now in the next slide, we will see its animation. Here we will see an interesting inversion of the double slider linkage. The linkage is shown here in a schematic form. So it has essentially four links and four pairs. Two of them are revolute pairs and two are sliders. Now we are going to fix link number three like this. That makes link two and link four as the input and output links. And since they are connected to the fixed link through these two pins, which, which are capable of complete rotation, both two and four will rotate completely. Finally, link one is connected to link two and four via these two prismatic or sliding pairs. Now the geometry of sliding pairs is such that the guide and the slider are aligned with each other. So if the guide turns through a certain angle, the slider is bound to turn through the same angle. And if the slider turns through a certain angle, the guide will turn through the same angle. In effect, if we give some rotation to link number two, it gets transferred to link number one as it is. Same direction, same magnitude. And link one's rotation will be transferred to link four as it is. So the net effect is if link two turns through some angle, link four will also turn through exactly the same angle. Now let us see this mechanism in a more descriptive form over here. So these two fully rotating pins B and C are over here. Are connected to them are link four and link two, these two links which will fully rotate. And link one is this orange link looking like this cross uh, slot is engaging with both link two and four. Let's watch its motion. So I will drag on link two, our input. And you can see link one undergoes the same rotation and that rotation gets transferred to link four as it is. So in effect, link two and four both are rotating through the same angle. Now, where can such motion be used? Well, you can notice the axis of rotation of B and C are parallel to each other. So if you want to transfer the rotation of this axis to the other, so two parallel shafts you can imagine, then this will be a very useful mechanism. When used for this purpose, that is for transferring rotation of one shaft to a parallel shaft, this mechanism is called 
as Oldham's coupling because it couples those two parallel shafts. Now let us see the physical arrangement which will help us do that. So link two and four are two shafts. Say link two is our input shaft shown in green here. Link four is the output shaft shown in yellow. And at the end of both these shafts, we have these discs or flanges. And in each of these flange, we have a slot dug. So there is a slot here and there's a slot here. Link one, which is this red disc now, has a mating projection uh, that engages in these slots. And you can notice these two projections are at right angle to each other. Let us use this action link here to see this in 3D and uh, watch the animation. So this is how a old times coupling looks. This is one shaft. This is the other shaft. And engaging with, with both of them is this intermediate disc, uh, our link number one. If you see in this view, you can notice that the two shafts are not collinear, but they are parallel. So there is a little offset between these two shafts. And that is precisely why we need to couple them using this special coupling, the old hams coupling. Let's set this in motion. So this is how old hams coupling moves. Okay, so this was later about the old hams coupling. Now the next inversion is elliptical triangle. So in this diagram, if you see, it will be similar to double slab branches, but here, if you see one point P is located on this binary link AB, which is attached to this slider B and which is attached, other point is attached to slider A. So here, when these two sliders, they will be having relative motion with respect to each other. So this point P in this elliptical triangle, it, it's, itself name indicates that it will try to just trace, this point P will try to trace an ellipse whose major axis will be AB and minor axis will be AP as per the configuration. And this elliptical triangle, it is only used for drawing the ellipse or elliptical nature graph. And here, the same, it will be having two turning pair and two sliding pairs. And as they are having surface area contact, so they comes under the category of the lower pair. Thank you.